Here we go with this next lesson in the straight line chapter. We're now on lesson five and I'm calling it AX plus BY plus C equals zero. This equation here is really the general equation of a straight line. And I know what you're all thinking, you're all shouting, no it's not. The general equation of a straight line is Y equals MX plus C. However, you can rearrange this equation. You could move the MX term to the other side, you could move the C to the other side, and you'd be left with zero on the right. If you do rearrange it, then you will get just another form of the equation. It's just another way of writing it. And this formula here, AX plus BY plus C equals zero, is still just the general equation of a straight line. A, B and C are just going to be numbers. For example, if you had, instead of Y, you might have 2Y, so B would just be 2. Or instead of 1Y, you might have 6Y, so B would be 6. The same with the number in front of X. It doesn't have to just be 1. You could have 7X, negative 2X, and again, C is just going to be whatever number C is. Obviously, if it was a plus 5 here, you subtract 5 from both sides or move it over, you then have negative 5. Okay, but A, B and C are just going to be numbers. It's another way of writing it. Which one do you use then? Well, sometimes you'll need y equals mx plus c. Sometimes you'll be given that and then you'll need the other one. Sometimes you'll be given that and you'll need y equals mx plus c. You've got to try and think about what it is you are wanting to find and you have to be able to switch between them. So I'm going to do a few examples of that, starting with example one, just over the page. So example one, rearrange the general equation rearrange to the general equation AX plus BY plus C equals zero and then write down the values of A, B and C. So I'm going to give you three equations and we'll go through them and then rearrange them so they look like this something X plus something Y plus something equals zero. So going through them one at a time we have 3X take away 2Y equals negative 7. So the first thing you want to do is you want to think, right, well, I want X and Y on the same side. I also want a number on the same side. I want a zero on the right. So you really want to get rid of this negative seven. So you can add seven to both sides, or you can move the negative seven over and it would become a plus, but we'd have three X plus two Y plus seven, three X minus two Y plus seven equals zero. So then we can write down the values of A, B and C. It's just the coefficients of X and Y and then the number on its own. Doing the same thing with B, we have Y equals negative 5X plus 9. Again, the best way to probably do that is to think, right, well, on the right-hand side, I want 0. So if I move this negative 5X over to the other side, either add 5X to both sides or move this over and it become plus. Or, uh, and also with the 9, you want to subtract 9 from both sides or move the 9 and it goes to minus 9. After that it is asking us for AX plus BY plus C equals 0, so in other words something X something Y plus a number equals 0. Leaving it like this is absolutely fine with X and Y the other way around, but if you do want to write it with X then Y and then the number equals 0, that's fine as well. Just put the 5X first and then put the plus Y and then leave the minus 9. From there we do have the a is going to be 5, B is just going to be 1, and C is just going to be that negative 9. The next one, a wee bit trickier this time, we have Y take away 2 equals 3 quarters of X add 5. First thing you want to do with this one is you want to think, right, well there's a fraction, everybody hates fractions, unless you're Freddy and you love fractions, so you want to get rid of the denominator first of all. So how do we get rid of the divide by 4? That's right, you can move it to the other side and multiply by 4, or multiply both sides by 4. So doing that, if I move this over, then I'd be multiplying the y take away 2 by 4. So I've got 4 bracket y take away 2 equals 3 bracket x add 5. From there, you then want to multiply out the brackets. So I've got 4y take away 8 would equal 3x and then plus 15. And we know from here we just want to get every single term onto the left hand side. So subtract 3x from both sides, subtract 15 from both sides, or move the 3x over, it become minus, move the 15 over, it become minus. But that's what you'd end up getting. 
You could do it in a couple of stages, or you could just go to that answer there. With the number of x's being a negative 3x, your negative 8 and the negative 15 is negative 23, and then the 4y is just staying as 4y, so we'll get x, y, then a number. That is what it's asking us for in the question, so you can write down the values of a, b, and c. Again, it's just the coefficients. How many x's? How many y's? And what's the number just in its own? Just check that you do have 0 on the right-hand side. Example 2. Quite a similar set out. Uh, find the gradient and y-intercept of these equations. So, three equations here, and they're all written in that form, ax plus by plus c equals zero, and you want to write down the gradient. How could you go about doing that? Well, you know to get the gradient in the y-intercept, your equation has to be of the form y equals mx plus c. You need the y equals in order to read off the gradient and the y-intercept. So with this first one, really I want the y just on its own, I want everything else on the other side, so undo anything that you're adding first of all. So get rid of this uh, 4x, get rid of the 10. If you do that, well move the 4x to the other side so it becomes minus 4x, move the 10 to the other side so it's minus 10, or take away 4x and take away 10 from both sides. So I've got 2y equals negative 4x, take away 10. And then after that, I still want y equals, not 2y, so I'd have to get rid of this times by 2. So divide by 2, and divide every single term by 2. If you do that, negative 4 divided by 2 is negative 2, negative 10 divided by 2 is negative 5. I've now got it in the form of y equals, so I can read off the gradient and the y-intercept. So the gradient's just how many x's you have. It's the number in front of x, which is negative 2, so you know m is going to be negative 2. And the y-intercept, the number on its own, is negative 5. So that'll be crossing the y-axis at negative 5. Example B, we have 3x take away 5y plus 1 equals 0. Again, we want it in the form of y equals. You can do this one different ways, and you might do it differently than the way I'm about to do it. But I'm thinking if I move the 3x over and the 1 over, I'd have negative 5y equals. I don't want a negative for y. So what I could always do is I could move the 5y to the other side, or add 5y to both sides. If I do that, I'd have 3x plus 1, that would be left on the left, and the 5y would be on the right. And it would be a positive, because I'm adding 5y to both sides, or moving that over and become add. After that, just write it back to front, so instead of left-hand side equals right, just put the right-hand side equals the left, I'm just swapping it over. And again, I've got 5y equals, I don't want 5y equals, I just want y equals, so just divide every term by 5. 3 divided by 5 will just stay as 3 fifths, 1 divided by 5 will stay as 1 fifth, and again, you can now read off the gradient and the y-intercept. So the gradient's just how many x's? Well, the number in front of x is going to be 3 fifths, so m would equal 3 fifths. And the y-intercept, the number in its own is 1 fifth, it is positive, so it's just positive 1 fifth. And that's how you would do b. For c, 4, take away x, take away 3y equals 0, same idea, we want to get y in its own. You could start moving the 4 over, you could start moving the negative x over by taking away 4 and adding x. It leaves me with negative 3y equals. But because y is a negative, I'm going to move that to the other side or add the 3y uh, to both sides. If I do that, I've got 4 take away x equals 3y by just adding 3y to both sides. Write it back to front. So 3y would equal 4 take away x. Once again, divide every single term by 3, or move the 3 over and divide. If I do that, I would have the 4 divided by 3, and then the 1x divided by 3. Just make sure you keep the negative as well. And the gradient and y-intercept, m would equal, the number in front of x is going to be negative 1 third, so that's your gradient, and the number in its own is the 4 thirds, so that will stay as 4 thirds for the y-intercept. And that's how you would do... Um, this set of examples. Last example then. Example 3. Rearrange the line y equals 1 quarter x take away 1 third into the form ax plus by plus c equal 
AX plus BY plus C equals zero. I know from this, unless you're Fractions Freddy, you are all freaking out because this has fractions. And what you could do, I suppose, is move the quarter X over, you can move the third over, so you've got Y, take away a quarter X, plus one third equals zero. But a lot of the time, it might ask you to get rid of fractions, or you want to get rid of the fractions. Okay, so the way you can do this is, I'll just reveal that, start off just with what they're giving us, y equals a quarter x, take away one third, and you want to look at your denominators. You've got a quarter and you've got a third, so we've got fourths and thirds. Think about the lowest common denominator. So think about your four times table, four, eight, twelve, sixteen, and so on. Three times table with three, six, nine, twelve, fifteen, and it keeps on going. The smallest number in both of them, your lowest common denominator, will be twelve. So what you can do is you can multiply every single term, the y, the quarter x, and then the negative one third, multiply everything by twelve. If you do that, you will end up with this. So y times 12 will be 12y. The quarter x times 12 will be, well, just multiply the numerator, do 12 times 1, which is 12, so you've got 12 quarters times x, and then you've got the 12 over 3. You're just multiplying every single term by 12. From there, well, instead of writing 12 over 4, you can simplify it. Instead of writing 12 over 3, again, just simplify it, so you get a nice, easy number. So 12y equals 3x, take away 4. Once again, we want to in this form, ax plus by plus c equals zero, so I want to move everything over to the left-hand side. So subtract 3x from both sides, add 4 to both sides, or move the 3x over, it becomes minus, move the negative 4 and it becomes a plus. But either way, you'd have 12y take away 3x plus 4 equals zero. And from there, that's really your answer. But if you want to write it in the form of x, y number equals zero, then you can just write, rearrange it a wee bit. Put the negative 3x first, then the positive 12y, then the plus 4 equals zero. Again, that's just really the general equation of a straight line. All you're wanting to do is rearrange y equals mx plus c with a few trickier questions thrown in. And Sahana, you've just left me a message on Teams. Thank you very much. Uh, for this then, try some of these questions on page 215, give them a shot, see how you get on, and as usual, ask me if you need help, um, and think about how well you are getting on with these questions as well.